Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy video. Today we will talk about the anatomy of the heart and the main arteries from the heart in the horse. As you can see here, we remove the left forelimb, we remove the ribs, we kept only the first one as you can see there, and we removed also the left lung so that we can study the heart in situ and the main arteries as you can see in this view. So at the beginning we dissected the pericardium. This structure surround the heart completely and we move to the side. Here we can see the left ventricle located caudally while the right ventricle is located cranially. Between them we have the baraconal groove or you can name it as the left interventricular groove. In this area here, we can see this very important structure called the left auricular cordis. And here we can see part of the right auricular cordis. And that's why this service we are looking at called the auricular service. From the right ventricle, we have one very big artery called the pulmonary trunk. So this is here, the pulmonary trunk which moves dorsally and caudally and at this level here it gives two big branches called the pulmonary arteries one to the left lung and one to the right lung while from the other ve ventricle the left ventricle we have another very big artery called the aorta forming at the beginning the aortic arch and the thoracic aorta as you can see there the first branch from the aorta is here, the brachiocephalic trunk, which will give both left and right the subclavian arteries. Here we can see the left, sub, left subclavian artery from which the first branch called the costocervical trunk. The costocervical trunk moves upward, as you can see there. In other animals, it gives two branches. One goes to the cervix, to the neck, called the dip cervical branch or artery and one goes to the ribs and called the that one here called the intercostal artery here in the horse both branches which we can see there are actually the costal cervical trunk the next branch from the left subclavian artery here is the deep cervical artery which in the horse arose separately and directly from the subclavian artery. The next branch after that from the subclavian artery, here we can see the brachial plexus actually. You know, we, we know that all the nerves from this area, they come together to, to form the brachial plexus. Under the brachial plexus there, we can see the next branch from the subclavian artery called the vertebral artery. The vertebral artery in front, you can see it there in front of the first rib. So let's look at it again under the brachial plexus and the deep there, we can see the left vertebral artery which moves inside the transverse canal of the cervical vertebra upward to the atlas. So from the left subclavian artery here and before giving, going out, from the thoracic cavity to give this big artery, which we'll talk about the later, we have this branch which moves toward the neck and called the superficial cervical artery. Another branch comes from the left subclavian artery inside the thoracic cavity. This one here moves on the dorsal surface of the sternum backward and leaves the thoracic cavity between the ribs, the last few ribs, called the internal thoracic artery. After giving the internal thoracic artery, the left subclavian artery leaves in front of the first rib to give and continues as axillary artery. This big one here is the axillary artery. Next to the axillary artery, if you look exactly there, we have another blood vessel here with a very thin wall. It's the axillary vein. It's big and both axillary artery and veins, they move to the forelimb, in this case to the left. Forelimb. The axillary vein collect blood from the forelimb, meet with that vein, this one here is the external jugular vein, to form the brachiocephalic vein, which will continue later as the cranial vena cava to the right atrium.
This is everything for this video. In the next video, we will talk about more structures found in the neck and the thoracic cavity. See you later. Bye-bye.